just because there is a discrepancy, does it necessarily mean that it's due to sexism? I mean, not necessarily, but I think that if there was not such a historical and like current impact of sexism, I think that this discrepancy would certainly be a lot less. But I think the institutions that have, we've talked about have been historically been where women have been oppressed or suppressed or whatever. I mean, so education, women now graduate with like strikingly at a strikingly higher rate than men do. They have more degrees. Um, they're even entering fields that have been historically dominated, like male dominated, such as like STEM careers. And so um, women are getting more opportunities within the, the job sphere to address the wage gap in the major cities across America. If a male and men and women for um, particularly like white collar jobs are get equal pay, and if not, the woman gets like slightly more. So I think in a lot of ways we've addressed these issues, and but so the narrative that they're still unaddressed is is cancerous to the flourishing of society because I think you need the flourishing of both sexes, and obviously we're seeing a large population of men feeling that they're now feeling oppressed and they're feeling upset and and almost like forgotten, and it's leading to in some ways a toxic culture. So I think that I think that if we look at what women have earned and been given, I think they've exceeded that if we look at like the, the, jo the pay gap, the, the jobs, the education, the amount of degrees that are, they're earning. So they have achieved these things and that's great. And so, but now we have to go back to balance. Like the pendulum swung, now it needs to balance out. Do, do also, you know I, mean? I would argue, so the, the percentage of men that have power is a very small percentage of men. So this idea that all men are in power or all men have power over women is fallacious. So it's probably like what percentage of men are CEOs, what percentage of men are in boardrooms, what percentage of men hold political power? And I wouldn't compared, say that it's compared more, to the I rest would just of say men. That the power is a lot easier to access and it's a lot more I don't know. I'd just say that it's easier to get to as a I mean, man than... I think the opposite I, of what I would you actually, said actually true, argue actually. that most, really? even male politicians, yeah. placate to the, the female voter base. But that because doesn't necessarily are, mean that it's easier for a woman, for a woman to... Well, but that, that could come down to the, the innate differences between men and women and what, what the choices that they make when it comes to what they go to, uh, what, what they choose to study in college, and also the career fields that they choose to go into. For example, there's, th there are more female nurses than male nurses. Is that evidence of a matriarchy and that women are oppressing men because there are more women who are nurses? Just because there's a discrepancy does not necessarily mean it's because there's sexism. That's true, but a discrepancy in power and a discrepancy in what opinions are voiced and heard, I would say does mean that there is a discrepancy in like Well, power. there's a whole lot of issues that face women that get a lot of attention politically, but it's not clear to me that there's any male-centric issues that really get much political attention at all. Which I think they should. I don't think that just because... I can't think of anything ma when it comes to male-specific male issues that gets attention. Like, his podcast is apolitical, right? How many... Can I ask, do you have sponsors? What, how's this relevant? So if you were promoting like a high, if you were a woman talking about being a moderate, like being politically moderate, talking to both sides, do you think that you'd have more advertising revenue or, or potential opportunities like that? If, if, you if were, I was a yeah. woman doing this similar kind of podcast, uh, call her daddy, mm -hmm. Drew Afualo, both of these women have actually, or both of these groups of women have actually said much more controversial things than I've said. Drew Afalo has a Spotify deal. Call her daddy did a Spotify deal for 100 million, 200 million dollars. I actually think I have, I'm doing better number viewership numbers than, I, I'm not sure about call her daddy, but I'm pretty sure my podcast is more download than Drew's. In any case, I could be, I, look, I could be wrong. And she says some real man-hating shit, that woman. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, but but because I'm a man, because I'm like, look, feminism is the mainstream. That is the status quo. Yeah, exactly. And I'm kind of coming at it from more of like, well, here's the way men are struggling. Here's the way men are disadvantaged. Yeah, that's not. 
that's not mainstream. You can't really say that and then exactly. expect to have be making nine-figure deals with Spotify or whatever bullshit platform it is. So exactly. It is what it is.